if there are two countries on the African continent that have a brother-sister relationship, but cat and mouse, we are able at the same time, we have to speak up about it. Because if we don't, often, a lot of the time, nothing gets done. However, with cheating, I feel like there should be a level of confidence and self-esteem and boldness that says, I am not going to let you do this to me. He tells her that, no, go switch that off. You know, we don't want to cause a fire here. How's a, a pot of boiling water going to start a fire? <laughs> That's like me. That's like me saying that I'm not racist. I've got white friends. That's not the case. So that she could get that. I yeah, Ivan? So then again, it's like, where patat? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is I, it is Gatleo Malela. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today we're going to be doing a controversial trending topics. This is the first time that I am filming since about over two weeks ago, especially when I'm talking about the sit down videos. So I'm so excited to have you here. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. Yes, I know you can see there's something different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, I just felt like switching it up a bit. Do you know what I mean? I felt like, you know what? You guys are used to me with this trademark. You know, this trademark her of mine that everybody's always asking me, yo, what color is it? Which one? Which style is this? Please tell us what you use for your products, for your hair. I'm tired. Today, I'm just like, nope. I don't feel like my hair today. So I'm going to pull out one of the wigs. And so I pulled out one of the wigs. That's this. That's all it is, girl. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. We are going to be doing the controversial trending topics segment today. I'm really excited to film this one, but I am going to give some disclaimers. This one is going to be a little bit on the serious side because of some of the things that you've asked me to talk about. So lit literally right now, right, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be channeling my older sister, be serious, don't, uh, uh, you know, cackle, cackle, if something is not necessary to cackle about. And there are topics here today that you have asked me to speak about that are not worth cackling over. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if I'm serious in this one, it be like that sometimes. Not every single video is going to be funny. And this one... This one looks like it might not be the funny one. You know what I mean? And so I've got a cup of tea. And so I've got a cup of tea because... Okay, uh, so we're going to get started. As you know, it works in the way that I will always put up a poll or a question bar or something in my community tab and i ask you guys share with me some of the things that you would like me to speak about in the next controversial trending topic so it's basically my take on a situation that has happened sometimes people dm me sometimes it's after i've put up the instagram poll but somebody dms me and says are you seeing what's being talked about can you please talk about it in the next controversial trending topics so i literally wrote them down in a little notepad on the phone and then we are going to talk around all those things and I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys know exactly what some of these things are going to be and that's fine that's that's okay all, all right, right. so the first one her being serious okay let's just be serious for a moment Chi Chi and the Miss South Africa competition okay I'm not going to say her name and her surname I'm going to be terrible at pronouncing them and I'm not really a fan of mispronouncing people's names and surnames but Chi Chi we all know the big huge debacle that started up with Chi Chi being called into the top 16 I think or was it the top eight I don't typically follow Miss South Africa like that however because this was such a huge thing I don't even watch the program itself, but this was such a huge thing that I followed along. And I was like, okay, let, let, let's, let's figure this one here okay. out. So first and foremost, if you're not familiar, I highly, highly suggest that you watch Sims Right or Owami. They will put you up to speed with what's going on with the Chi Chi situation. They've got videos galore on what's going on with the Chi Chi situation, okay? But essentially, Chi Chi entered 
Miss South Africa. She, she, she applied and entered for Miss South Africa and she was taken, she was accepted, all of this until the names of the top 16 or was a top eight were announced and everybody started to get to know who's who in the zoo, right? A lot of people do not follow the different stages before, right, top 16, top 10, top 8. So a lot of us found out about Chi Chi when she got to that, those clothing, closing stages, right, before the big competition. That is fine. That is fine. When we got to that stage, I was like, okay, so I'm looking at these beautiful women. I mean, at this time, the competition's already happened. We have a winner. She is a gorgeous, gorgeous girl, Mia. I think her name is Mia. Girl, she's so pretty. She is so gorgeous, but I did not watch the competition enough to know much about her, so I'm not going to speak on her. However, so when Chi Chi came up, we heard her name and we heard her surname. And then people started doing a little bit of digging. South Africans are, if, you know what? If there's one thing South Africans are going to do, we're going to dig. Okay, we're going to want to find out, wait, 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 wait. Okay, it seems like you have a Nigerian uh, heritage or lineage. Okay, fine. Uh, but then you are on a prestigious competition like Miss South Africa, right? So there must have been due diligence done. But because South Africans are private detectives, we were like, okay. So a lot of South Africans did a lot of digging and looking over, okay, who is Chi Chi, all of this. They went onto her social media platforms, all of this, that, and the other. And they realized that, oh, okay. So her father is Nigerian and it seems like her mother, initially there was a little bit of confusion here with the fact that the mother, is she South African? Because if she's South African, okay, she's, she's South African. If she's born here, then she's South African, right? which is something that I still agree with. Like if she's born here, she's got citizenship, she's been here all her life, what is the problem? Irrespective of who the heritage is or the lineage is behind you and your family name. Same I mean, for me, initially, I was just like, okay, I don't see what the problem is. If her mother is South African, if her father is Nigerian. Then more things started coming out. Of course, the FBI detectives of social media went onto her social media and they saw that even on her social media platforms, she had the Nigerian flag and a Mozambican flag. And everybody was like, wait a minute. Nigerian, Mozambican. So there's nothing about you that identifies with South Africa, but you are entering the Miss South Africa. That's when my eyebrow went up. I'm not even going to lie. That's when my eyebrow, I'm like, okay, maybe she just likes the two countries, you know, but she's still she still has the citizenship, yeah, more, and she was born here. So I was like, okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. Maybe she just likes the countries. She likes the music. I also went on to some of her profiles, um, specifically on TikTok, and I'm looking through her TikTok uh, posts and all of this, and I can see that, okay, she, she posts a lot of music content where she's dancing, all of this, and she's dancing to Nigerian music, cool, whatever, no problem. And then the digging continued to happen, right? So people are now trying to understand, or no, 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 no. Please explain to us, is she originally born here? What is the criteria to enter into Mrs. Miss, Miss South Africa? And because of that, the organization itself had to do some digging as well. So the organization itself contacted Home Affairs in South Africa, the Department of Home Affairs, to say that, can you give us more information about Chi Chi and her parents? What we do know is that her father has always said, I'm Nigerian, this and this, I met Chi Chi's mother, so and so, such and such, blah, blah, blah. Go to Owami and Sims for that stuff, guys. Me, 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 I'm not going to give you the full information because I just feel like we're, got, we're getting to a point, right? Okay. No, Grand Chapel. Uh, Home Affairs does their digging and their investigation uh, because of uh, the organization of Miss South Africa asking them to do so. So they do that. As this is happening... Chi Chi's dad is doing interviews, he is talking to people on the radio, and he's like, yes, my daughter this, and he sees his daughter as a Nigerian, okay? He doesn't identify his daughter as a South African, which for me went, hmm. 
again raised the red red flag. I'm I'm listen, I'm gonna tell you like it is. For me, it raised the red flag. I was sitting there thinking, okay, sir, dad, um, okay, yeah. really? Okay, fine. That's weird. And then Home Affairs came back and dropped the bomb. Home Affairs says, yes, Chi Chi, we see the things here, but it seems like there might have been some prima facie evidence to suggest that Chi Chi's mother might not be of South African heritage. This is a spanner in the works. This becomes a problem. Now, mind you, while everybody is trying to find out all these things, blah, 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 South Africans and Nigerians are fighting. They are fighting. If there are two countries on the African continent that have a brother-sister relationship, but cat and mouse, we are Ibona at the same time. We love each other, but we hate each other at the same time. It's Nigeria and South Africa. That's facts. That's facts. We're either fighting over pop culture. We're fighting over the fact that um, Nigerians are saying that South Africans are xenophobic. We're going to get on to that. I just want to end the Chi-Chi one quickly. We're fighting. We're fighting. So while this Chi-Chi and Miss South Africa thing is happening, Nigerians and South Africans are fighting online. South Africans are saying we as the South African population or citizens of South Africa, we have every right to question things like this, of which I agree. We do have every right to question things like this. Much of, not to do with xenophobia, not to do with whatever. We have a right to ask questions. South Africa is the one country that I know of, that I live in, where we ask questions. And we do not care who likes it, who doesn't like it. We don't care. What's happening? We fight for each other online. Facts. Facts. We're brothers and sisters. We fight for each other online, but at the same time, we ask a ton of questions. And because of a ton of questions being asked by South Africans, more in-depth uh, researching of figuring out what's happening with Chi Chi's family situation happened, and then we found out that chances are there might be um, a, 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 a citizenship issue with Chi Chi's mom as well. So basically... They are insinuating, allegedly, okay, I'm not an Awami, so I don't know how to talk this kind of talk and lingo, but alleged, it is alleged that Chi Chi's mother may have stolen somebody's identity who belongs, who was born in South Africa, not belongs, who was born in South Africa, stole her identity for herself so that she could get that I Yeah, Ivan? So then again, it's like, where patata? Hey, banna. Oh. Hey, banna. Now, for me, initially, I was just like, you know what? I feel bad for her. I genuinely do feel bad for her. She doesn't deserve this. She was a child when all of this happened. Or she probably wasn't even born yet, right? And maybe the mother stole the identity and citizenship of, of somebody who is born here so that she could get a better life for herself here at the expense of a South African. And this is what made us mad. I didn't blame Chi Chi about anything, but I did say we need to acknowledge the fact that identity theft has been done here on somebody who is South African who now cannot have access to anything because that person's identity has been stolen. You can't open a bank account. You can't get married. You can't go to school in some instances. You can't, you can't do anything when your identity has been stolen. So that became a big problem. And because of that, um, it became unfortunate, but Chi Chi had to withdraw. And she said it was because of all the bullying that she was receiving online, of which I do not stand beside bullying. I must say she was it. She was so unfairly attacked with the bullying and all of this that was happening online to her that even I didn't agree with that. I, I, I could only imagine the toll that it took on her mental health. I will never endorse or condone any kind of bullying. And it's very unfair that she would now have to drop out because of what's been happening online. Um, am I okay with that press statement that she released? No, I'm not. I just feel like, no, that's, that's not fair. Don't make people feel bad for questioning certain things and wanting to know more information about certain things, which then led to this. 
You know what I'm saying? But it became a huge fight between South Africans and Nigerians, specifically about xenophobia and Afrophobia. And that was the next thing that I was asked to speak about. That leads us into the topic of xenophobia and Afrophobia. Hmm. South Africans were accused of being xenophobic. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> right. All right. So then it entered us into South Africans being seen as xenophobic and Afrophobic. This is a tale as old as time. South Africans have experienced this. We have seen it. We have been told we are xenophobic over and over and over because of what is happening in the country at the hands of things that happened and squabbles and bad things that have happened between foreign nationals and South Africans in the country. I do think, however, you would have to, I would be remiss by not saying that you would have to know exactly what things are happening in the country between Nigerians and South Africans or people of, it's mostly Nigerians, so let's call a spade a spade. You would have to know exactly what is happening within the country between the plight of Nigerians versus South Africans to be able to understand why South Africans are the way they are, especially towards Nigerians. Now, I'm not speaking for all South Africans. I've got Nigerian friends. I've got a very, but, <laughs> that's like me. That's like me saying that I'm not racist. I've got white friends. That's not the case. Sorry. I am speaking personally for me here and other South Africans where I'm going to say to you, not all, Zen uh, blah, 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 blah. not all South Africans are xenophobic, okay? But we also need to call a spade a spade. There are many things that are happening within the country that probably the news doesn't get out to other parts of the world that happen that cause internal squabbles between South Africans and Nigerians. Big thing is about drugs. Big things is about um, Nigerians and our women and our, you know, it's, it's just huge. It's huge. It's a big pop culture and social culture thing that is happening between Nigerians and South Africans. This stuff is not the stuff that's going to be reported a lot. This is what we are hearing on the streets of urban culture. However, the big things that will be reported on are... Things like the xenophobic attacks, of course, the news is going to get hold of that and they're going to report about that, the xenophobic attacks and whatever, which I do not condone, that is wrong. However, as a South African, I am going to say, if a South African is going to stand up and complain or voice their dissatisfaction with regards to what is happening in their country because of illegal foreign nationals, they have every right to do so. And if we're going to be uh, labeled as xenophobic just because we, we have an opinion over the fact that uh, so many bad things are happening to our women at the hands of Nigerian men or drugs and what is happening in Joburg Central because of drugs linked to Nigerians, South Africans have every right to speak up about that. But then to be called xenophobic just because we have concern over our people and what is currently happening is a little bit uncalled for and unfair. So I do not agree with that. I think we'd have to go to school, all of us, and actually dissect what xenophobia actually is. Okay? And I think that we get a bad rep we get a bad rap because we choose to speak about these things out loud and voice them out loud instead of just saying, oh, well, this is happening and blah, blah, blah. We get a bad rap for it. When we stand up for our people and we stand up for the rights of our people, even to our government, We'll stand up for the rights of our people and we'll say that this is enough. We'll talk about closed borders. We'll talk about making the rules stricter for people coming into the country because we already struggle with so many issues uh, such as unemployment and poverty where demand high, supply not so much. So when South Africans are now having to compete with illegal 
not legal, hear my chat, illegal foreign nationals who come into the country with illegal papers and do all these identity thefts and all of that, we have every right to speak up about it. But then to be called xenophobic because we're speaking up for our people, it's a bit of a, it's a, you're doing a bit too much. Yeah. He's right outside my door. Essentially, that's all I'm saying. I feel like South Africans need to be given the platform to speak about issues that pertain to South Africans, that affect South Africans directly, even whether it's at the hands of the government or whether it's at the hands of for illegal foreign nationals. We have to speak up about it because if we don't, often a lot of the time nothing gets done. So to be labeled, and I mentioned the Nigeria-South Africa struggle here because that's always the big push and pull here, right? And it's on social media, it's everywhere. You never really hear about these cases happening between South Africans and somebody from Malawi or Uganda or whatever. It's always squabbles, internal squabbles between Nigerians and South Africans in this country. So to be labeled xenophobic because we want to speak up about the issues that um, affect South African nationals, I don't know. I think it's a bit of a stretch. I think it's a bit of a reach. Definitely a bit, a major reach. Alrighty, so I had to take a quick moment because there's some stuff happening around the house, but we are back. So that's basically how I feel about the xenophobia situation in the country. Yes, it's very important for people to voice their opinions, especially when it comes to xenophobia and no form of xenophobia will be accepted. Whether it's happening in South Africa, whether it's happening in Russia, whether it's happening in uh, uh, Timbuktu, no form of uh, xenophobia is accepted. But I also think that the people of the country in question should also be able to voice their concerns, especially when it comes to people who are coming inside the country illegally and pushing illegal businesses. I think when it's at the detriment of the people of the country, then it's something that the nationals of the country should be able to speak about without being labeled xenophobic. That's my chat. I will end it off with this one, ne? Uh, before I start part two of the controversial trending topics. Of course, what I spoke about is a lot and it's not something that I can speak about in four minutes. I felt like I needed to actually address it and speak about it authentically from my stance and my point of view. So there will be more in part two, but for now we're going to end it off with Nota and Lebu back together. Now I saw this picture and I'll put it here. I saw it, Nota and Lebo are from the Ultimatum South Africa. Again, another show that made its way all over the world. I mean, Americans were talking about the show. Let me tell you, um, this is about the Ultimatum and it's about Nota and Lebo being back together. Let me tell you, I don't think, I think you might be surprised at my response to this because when you love someone, when you love someone, when you love someone, it's difficult. You can easily say, no, we're not going to get back together. Oh, he did a dirty. Listen, I don't agree with them getting back together. I mean, if somebody tells you right out front that they've cheated on you, they've slept with someone else, especially on a show that you were supposed to come together literally unpack the issues of your relationship and why and then you're going to give your partner the ultimatum to say listen it's either we get married or we call it quits right what Lebo found out at the on the show about Ruth and Nota I think that should have been grounds enough for her to leave 2023 there's many, many other things that can happen in a relationship where you can, you know, there'll be forms of disrespect or disagreements here and there or things that you would need to work through as a couple that do not warrant breaking up. But cheating is something that warrants breaking up, especially for me. For me, it's something that warrants breaking up. If, if I'm going to cheat on him or he's going to cheat on me, I get it. 
ah, uh, no, let's, let's just call it quits. Bye-bye, papas. It's fine. It's been good, right? But um, I also do firmly believe that, hey, man, when you love someone, it's a little bit difficult. Waters are murky. I don't think that they should be together because Nota has gone and proved himself. Okay? Get Nota. What's his name? Why do I feel like I'm not saying it right? I don't know, but I, 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 for some reason, I feel, I feel I, like I'm blanking, blanking out with his name. But uh, what he did to Lebu was absolutely unacceptable. So to see that picture of them, I think somebody snapped up a picture of them or they put up a picture of them sitting at a restaurant having dinner or something. I was just like, girl. Oh. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? Girl, uh, I was a little bit surprised and I was a little bit shocked about that. I, I wasn't, I wasn't happy to see it, but at the same time, you know, grownups are grownups. You're going to love who you're going to love, irrespective of whether you guys were on a show and he embarrassed the living daylights out of you, but you're going to love who you're going to love. <laughs> Lebu decided that Nota was the man of her dreams. And, but it's, it's also probably because of so many other things, like relationships go through a lot. And if you've been together for years and years on end, it's very difficult to let go. So maybe she's just not at that point yet. She's just not at that point where she's ready to let go because a, a woman, when she's ready to let go, she will let go all she of it off. She'll cut all of it off. You know, she'll cut off all forms of communication. She'll delete, she'll block, she'll do whatever. But when somebody is still holding on and when somebody still feels like they, there's something there that can be salvageable, a lot of the times couples do get back together. It's not, it's not an uncommon thing, this thing. It happens all the time. Couples do get back together. And I feel like with Nota and Lebo, that's exactly what happened. I feel like that's exactly what happened. Um, I feel hurt for her because I feel like uh, I genuinely think it puts into question a lot of feelings that she has with regards to confidence and self-esteem, especially with cheating. Like it could be with anything else. We can sit here and have a whole entire roundtable discussion. However, with cheating, I feel like there should be a level of confidence and self-esteem and boldness that says, I am not going to let you do this to me. You've done it once. You're probably going to do it again and again and again and again. And the moment you forgive cheating is the moment where you let the other person know that you, not to say that you're okay with how they treat you, but you're basically letting them know that things like that, there's a potential and possibility of you letting them slide. And that should never be something that your partner and somebody that you share a bed with should ever think when it comes to you. They should never ever think that there is a potential that you will let it slide and it's not a big deal. Absolutely not. Let's end it off with the death of Sonia Massey. Now, somebody asked me to speak about this. I do follow American news and pop culture and all of that from time to time. And I get it from social media, but I also watch the news like CNN and all of that. I do follow. Now, this was a very, very tragic case. And if you're not familiar with this case, you might not know what this is all about. But it's a very, very tragic case about a woman who was in her home a black woman, Sonia Massey. I think she's 34. She was 34, 35. May her soul rest in peace because this woman, the way that she passed is just unfathomable. It's unfathomable. Now we know that in America, police brutality and police shootings and beatings are a huge thing, especially especially against black people, more especially men, but against black people just generally, it's a huge crisis, much like the school shootings and all of that that's happening right now in America. Much like we also have issues with xenophobia and whatever, each country has issues that they have to grapple with internally in the country. But of course, news always gets out. So we found out about this while I was watching the news and I was on TikTok one night and I saw it. So this woman calls the, she calls 911 and she calls the police and she says, listen, I'm going to need you to bring out some cops up in here because I feel like there's a prowler. There's someone like moving around in my yard and this, and I don't feel safe. Two cops get dispatched to her place. They knock at the door. 
she tells them everything she even says like i'm so scared to be standing with you guys here right now you know basically alluding to everything that's happening in the country with regards to police people police officers and black people right so she says i'm really scared but i i really need you to help me out right now because there i feel like there's someone walking around the premises so the guys look and walk around the premises they don't see anything they knock on her door she tells them that so for some reason where they could have just said okay well there's nothing here but if you hear anything i mean this woman is in her home she's in her home she's at home she's not driving she's not on the street she's not at a club she's not whatever she's at home right and she's in her pajamas to show you that she was relaxing getting ready to turn down for the evening and this happened and she called the cops for her safety she was concerned for her safety so instead of them calling it right there in that moment and saying listen we didn't see anything just make sure everything is locked if you hear anything else let us know we'll come back you know what i'm saying instead this trash of a human being police officer i don't know his name but i'm going to call it because it needs to be said much like we're saying sonia massey i think we should also say the perpetrator's name so i'm going to write it down here that trash piece o s ne that trash person then proceeds to say okay look uh give me your identification right give me your id let me see what what is she allows them into the home so that she can go look for the id him and his partner walk in and you can even tell that his partner is behind the pos the piece s okay i don't even get it no one gets why you are even in her home but she invites you into the home so that she can look for the id that you've requested so she's walking around looking for it i mean these guys are walking around he's asking her the most ridiculous questions and he's insinuating things he's just a trash person and you can see that he's he's got a problem with people of color you you don't even have to uh ask anybody twice he's got a problem with people of color then he then proceeds to say okay she sits on the couch she's looking through her purse looking for this thing he then spots a a a, a pot of boiling water on the stove he tells her that no go switch that off you know we don't want to cause a fire here how's a a pot of boiling water going to start a fire <laughs> right when there are people in the house to us right to us so anyway sharpo she gets up she goes whatever she goes and blah 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 something happens with an exchange between the two of them and she says um that no he says you better not pour that water at me or whatever blah blah and she says oh no i rebuke you in the name of what what she says all these things nothing that should have caused any issue she's holding the pot in her hand as she's saying that and she's saying it jokingly that's the thing he's like no you're not going to say that to me or you're not going to curse me or whatever the hell he said i literally blacked out when he was speaking and then he draws his weapon and he shoots her in a nutshell that's what he does so of course the country is in an uproar the americans are in an uproar of which they should be absolutely absolutely justified the uproar that this woman's death has has made especially given the fact that she was in her home and she had called them for their assistance so it's going to cause an uproar you know what i'm saying it's going to cause some some problems so that's what happened i'm living about it but i don't live in america and i don't go through the struggles that americans go through so i don't feel i feel like my voice can be heard with regards to how angry i am about it but there's not much i can do sitting on this side of the world having to deal with our own south african problems but as a human it's something that makes me so livid to see the school shootings the gun control laws in south in america are just wild how are 17 year olds carrying around guns like it's it's nuts right but um that one in particular literally just broke my heart i didn't even i i couldn't even watch i watched it once or twice and i couldn't watch it anymore all i can say is that that guy must burn he must burn and the story is coming out of that saying that he was a 
he had been fired from six other jobs before he got that one as a police officer. I would like to know why he was fired. And I can tell you that probably a lot of those things were racially motivated. That is why he was fired. And ding, ding, here you go. He offs. He literally takes the life of a woman who was in her house who had called them to ask for their assistance. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. The, the, we have racism issues everywhere. Even in this country, we have them. But you're in the States, it's wushushu. Wushiwishi in the States. Anyway, huh, this was a rather serious one. The second part of controversial trending topics will be a little bit on the lighter side of things. So I'm hoping that that one will be a little bit better. But... As much as we can make fun and make jokes and make lighthearted, I think it is really important to talk about the serious things as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. I love to encourage healthy debates, so let's talk about it. If you agree or you disagree, please let me know down below. I do not encourage bullying. I do not endorse or encourage xenophobia and any forms of Afrophobia. I think that... Uh, as, a, as the, a continent, we have a long way to go in terms of um, supporting our, each other, more especially as black people, supporting each other and um, fighting for one another. But at the same time, that shouldn't be pitted against the things that nationals of certain countries need. So that's, that's just my chat, okay? I'm going to end it here. I'm going to start part two immediately after this, and then we will get into that one. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. I appreciate you very much. So let it be known. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your support. I will see you in the next part two of Controversial Trending Topics. I'll see you soon. Sayonara.